Okay. How's it going, Jam Play Live? How are y'all doing? My name is Dave, and uh, I'm doing a little bit of an intro. The reason I played that song was kind of an intro to a series I'm going to be doing upcoming um, in February, just on playing and singing together. That seems to be a lot of things or uh, concerns a lot of people when they're playing guitar or music of any kind is how to take imitation, you know, playing tabs, imitating something somebody else is giving you, bringing it to a place of creation where you're creating something unique, creating something that's your own. And one of the skills needed to do that is playing and singing at the same time. And that can be difficult. Really, if you dumb down playing and singing at the same time to its finest form, all it is is polyrhythm. It's just two different rhythms going on at the same time. And so you have rhythm. Rhythm, all it is, is sound and silence, 
Okay, for those of you who are listening, some of you that's a simple concept, some of you that's a very difficult concept, but that's all rhythm is, sound and silence. If I sit here and I do boom, boom, I'm making sound, boom, I'm leaving space for silence, there's no real rhythm there. But if I put a little bit of varied rhythm and varied space in there, now we get something we can jam to, boom, 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 boom. And all you can see is that it's a difference between what's making noise and what's silent. And that's really all it is. And so one rhythm happening at the same time is usually what you're playing on your guitar, right? And it's usually easy because you're just playing something and focusing on what's going on in your hands. But when you take something else and add it in, it throws the brain all chaotic, okay? So one of the things that I think is helpful from my learning is just um, uh, having played drums um, before guitar, knowing how interdependence is formed. Basically, your brain, um, let's just boil it down to two things. It's an extremely com complex organism, but how you learn is you have your driver center. This is the front part of your brain. You have the cruise control part of your brain. This is the part that kind of controls everything throughout the day you don't think about, from driving your car to going to work. And when you're learning something new, everything is at the front of that brain. And so you're trying to focus on everything. So when you're trying to sing and play at the same time, you're trying to do 30 things all at once right here. What we have to do is we have to move some things to cruise control, to the back part of our brain. Okay, And the, the easiest way to do that is through developing muscle memory, through developing interdependence to where this limb, this limb, this leg, this leg can all think together. Now, obviously, you don't play guitar with your legs like you would drums, for instance. But it would be helpful if we would go back, let's rewind, take the guitar out of our hands and back up to the basics. I always say when you're learning something new, you need to start with the familiar and move forward. Okay, A lot of times what I see when people are singing and playing at the same time, they're trying to do it all at once. And so what they do is they end up syncopating and emulating what they're playing in their strum so or what they're singing in their voice. They're singing and they're saying, happy birthday to you. And the hand is going at the same meter and tempo as the voice. There's no interdependence there. It's all just synced. Okay, There's no polyrhythm. Two rhythms, two sound and spaces going together. Okay, and we've got to create that. So let's go back to the very basics of rhythm. And this is gonna kind of be an introduction into a series where I'll flesh this out further. But to get to the point where you can write a song, play a song similar to I just played, um, we have to learn some of these basics. So we're gonna start with familiar, okay? Most of you know what four four count is, four four being four beats in a measure. We know that if we break rhythm down, we can break it down into whole notes, okay? One note that fills that measure. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if we're on our little uh, if we're on our little click here, let's see if we can hear it. And let's see if we can slow this down. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's see if we can turn this up so we can hear it. Yeah, we can hear it really well. You can hear it okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Do you want me to turn it down at all? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit? Okay, I don't want to destroy the listener. But basically, this is your one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. A whole note is gonna last the length of all four of those notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Bum, 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 bum. Okay? It plays and lasts and sustains for all four of those notes. Okay? Let's see if I can stop this thing from sounding, okay? It's annoying. Now, if we take that, and most of you know this, but again, starting from a place of familiar and simple, and then we're gonna blow this up, and in our series, we're gonna go further with this, but hang with me. We're gonna take that whole note, we're gonna divide that whole note, okay? And that takes it into half. So we got two beats and two beats. So we've taken divide this measure into four. So we got ba, 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 okay? And all we're doing, that right there, that is the simplest, most foundational aspect to polyrhythm. You have two types of rhythm going on at the same time. So what we want to do to start developing some of this singing and playing together 
is we're just gonna incorporate, maybe you can't see my legs as much, but we're gonna do arms and we're gonna do legs, okay? It's important to do both arms and legs even though we're only gonna use guitar. It's because you're operating different centers of your brain and you're coordinating right and left sides of your body, right together, left together, and then bipolar where left side's going, right side's going, right side's going, left side's going. You're, you're complicating the interdependence, okay? So the first thing you can do is just start by a simple whole note. Just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So we got this going over here. And then we just start something simple over our left, our left hand. We start the half note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Most of you are thinking super simple, but you can probably feel that little twitch inside you when you first do that, you know, when you first do the rub your stomach, pat your head, there's a little twitch inside of you that that brain just logs the information. And what you need when you play and sing is that logging needs to come quicker. It's that that information's going from here, concentrating, you're concentrating here, your brain moves it to here, and now you can do something else, okay? It's a fallacy and a lie to believe that we can do th multiple things at once. It's actually, we can only do one thing at a time. This part of the brain can do multiple things at once, but we can only concentrate on one thing at once. The next thing we can do, take it and do the same thing, but go from one limb to a leg. So we can do the whole note, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then our half note, our leg, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, then switch. One, two, three, four. So we got whole note in the hand, two, three, four, half note in the foot. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, this is the simplest way to do it. Now, take something a little bit more complex. And I would suggest before we move on, when you practice this, do it with the metronome. Uh, your brain is designed to move at a pace. When I teach students, I've been teaching students for 18 some years. I've watched people who use metronomes very, very um, well, religiously. They're always practicing with it. My drum teacher used to make me sleep with it on, um, hard as that is to believe. Um, but to get that meter in your head, I've noticed in students who practice with metronome, students who practice without a metronome, there's a vast difference in how fast they progress in all aspects of the game, okay? So when you're doing it with the metronome, you're gonna increase a lot faster. Why? Because it's like a car. When you drive a car, it's gas, brakes, gas, brakes. If you're always jerking, pulling forward, slamming on the brakes, you're gonna destroy your transmission, right? Drop, drop something out. But if you're easing into stop, easing out, easing out of stop, easing into stop, that pace, it helps that car survive. Your brain's the same way. If you're playing, you naturally play things faster that you're really good at. You naturally slow down things that you're bad at. That brain just can't handle it. It's like slamming on the brakes, slowing down. Pace it, okay? Put a pace to it. And what we can do, I have right now, I have the quarter note at 105 on my metronome. And what we can do is that one, two, three, four. And that brain is logging that pace and then put that half note to it in the leg you know switch sides okay really simple way to do this now what you do is you work from the familiar forward okay that could be very simple for many of you chances are that is very familiar to some of you but we're putting those, we're keeping it simple, getting something in cruise control. And what a great thing to do when you're doing this, overcomplicate it. Take something simple, bring something complex in with conversation. So start that simple. We're listening to the metronome. We're playing a whole note. And then I'm having a conversation with you. So my brain is doing a lot of things right now. It's listening to that metronome and all of that is subconscious to me. I just feel that now. I'm not concentrating on. All I'm concentrating on is talking to you right now. This is second nature. And then add that next thing in while you're keeping the conversation. Just talk about your day, talk about the weather, talk about anything. Have a conversation with your mom, have a conversation at the table. I'm sure it's gonna drive your kids nuts, okay? But 
that aspect of I'm doing four or five things at once, I'm bringing familiar in with unfamiliar, okay? And it's super simple to do that now. What I did was I just played and I sang at the same time. You didn't see it, but I did. That's all it is. It's keeping one rhythm going and improving. So you got structure here, you got improv here. And when you pick up that guitar, it's just more, you can more complicate it as you get better to where it's very simple here, but then you improv over it with the voice. Okay, that's really, just let's dumb it down to the simplest terms so we can understand it and then bring it forward, okay? The next time, bring a little bit more complication. So if we divide that half note further, okay, we get quarter notes. So now we have two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now do the same thing. You can start a whole note. So we got one, two, three, four. There's our whole note. There's a half note. Maybe here's our quarter note. Okay, so now we've complicated it. And you could do something simple now with bringing in actual pitch with it. You could do your voice with it. So we got the whole note here. We've got the half note. And then maybe I want to sing here on a do, 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 do. Or maybe you want to sing a scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. That's a bit more complicated because when you sing a seven note scale, obviously we have eight notes in an octave, but you're singing to four beats. So that seven note scale with the eighth on the end, it's gonna throw everything a little bit weird. It, you're gonna hit on certain beats going up. You're gonna hit, hit on certain, it's gonna offset all the beats going down because you're in groups of seven rather than groups of eight. And that's gonna be serious over time. If you can hear what's gonna happen to this. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, re, mi fa so la ti do ti la so fa mi re do you see and that third kind of stands around because we got seven seven and seven it brings us around to 21 okay that 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 four it, it kind of loops itself around every two or three stanzas okay so that is a more complicated way to do the same thing okay and you can do this with simple um, simple songs now Okay, so you can take it and we're still applying the same principle. Say we want to keep a quarter note in this beat in this foot, and we want to keep a half note in this hand, and we're going to sing, um, Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear whomever, happy birthday to you. I always like to tell people to start playing and singing with very simple things. Obviously we start with simple in the whole note, half note, quarter note. We've slowly progressed, but then take things that are familiar to your brain already, like happy birthday, Mary had a little lamb, twinkle. Not that you just are excited about nursery rhymes, but they're familiar. Your brain has logged them because you've heard them year after year. Don't start with a song you're just starting to learn that's foolish. Your brain does not know how to compute that yet. Start with something that already recognizes the meter. Because if I sing, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb, you know right there that that is not correctly sung, okay? Because your brain's already logged the space that's all Mary had a little lamb is, is Mary had a little lamb. That's it, that's all it is, okay? Now, we're getting to the point where we pick up this guitar, but let's jump one more, okay? And some of you may think we're not doing anything, but we're already playing, again, I wanna reiterate, we're already playing and singing together at the same time. We're taking this really hard concept that frustrates so many people, and what I found over the years is just when this, when a concept frustrates someone, bring it back down to level zero, bring everyone to the same playing field and let's just build up, okay? So we're doing, we're gonna put one more block on top of this tower now. So we've got that 
quarter note. Now we're going to bring in that half note. Now we're going to bring, now we brought in that quarter note. Now when you split that four in half, you get eighth notes. So now we don't have just one, two, three, and four. We have one and two and three and four and. Now this is considerably more complicated. And maybe for some of you it's not, that's awesome. You're, you're already there and we'll build more in the series up, upcoming that probably will get more advanced for you, but hang with me, okay? But the eighth note, it's already now, it's starting to introduce space because see a quarter note here is hitting on every note. That's called a downbeat, okay? When you see a director and a concert band doing this, they're marking every downbeat. And check out how every time I hit, there's a downbeat. But when you introduce an eighth note, what you do is you introduce the first amount of space. You get one down is on a sound and an upbeat. Okay, so now you're having to sense what's there and what is not there. And that's inc incredibly more complicated for the brain to, um, to access, okay? So when you bring this over to the guitar, much of your strumming is gonna be based on, most of your strumming is gonna be based on kind of an, uh, an eighth note pattern. So when you go to the guitar and you're trying here to get a consistent strum, which I've heard a lot of people on jam play in my time complain that they can't get their strum, um, consistent, the, the meter is hard, um, keeping it with a metronome is difficult. I hear it time and time and time again. And that is because there's one beat with, 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 um, with uh, the sound, one beat on the upstroke, one and, two and, three and, four and. Okay, so one way we can do this is teach you how to practice with a metronome just a little bit. We put on the metronome, one, two, three, four. Now we're gonna introduce the eighth note. And for mine, I'm on 105. To get the eighth note, just double it to 210. Mine's got a fancy little thing where I can bring the eighth note in here. Okay, so we got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And you're hearing all the noise, right? There's a down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. It's helping you hear that space, which is very helpful. So start with hearing every note in that eighth note, okay? And do the same thing, okay? Bring in your one, two, three, four. Could be on your leg, could be on your hand, however you want to do it. And then one, two, bring in your quarter note. And then bring in your eighth note. And then maybe you want to start talking and then maybe you want to start maybe singing a whole note. Do, re, mi, fa, and, can, and so on and so forth. And switch sides, okay? Or maybe keep the, I kept it on the same side. Now I switched it. My left leg's doing one thing, my right hand's doing one thing, and put a different sound with it. Or whole note, and then maybe do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, so, fa, mi, re, do, mi, fa, so, okay? And just keep it going, and you can see now we are considerably more complex, okay? Now, that is a great place to start. So, how to take this and practice it from what we've got so far. I would sit down and I would take a whole note, I would take a half note, a quarter note, I would stop there. Just do that for a little bit and mix it up as many ways as you can. Do, mix it up between right leg, left leg, so right hand's doing similar things to left to split up the body, split it over, or switch sides. So maybe in the middle of it, you're doing quarter notes over here and half notes in the left leg and switch it. Well, if I can even do it. So we got here. We're doing simple stuff, but now I'm introducing something more complex. I'm talking to you now. Why I've set this in motion. So I'm setting this part in the back of my cruise control brain, and then I'm bringing my chat to my front part of my brain, and I'm doing this. Now, the brain, if you look at it, it's firing in different places in different ways. And introduce different ways to do that. Bring in a snap, hit your body, hit your head, hit a different part on your arm, maybe move back and forth, maybe 
move back bef- and forth between a different part of your fingers um, because your brain, because if you're doing a whole note here and quarter notes here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? If you're doing something like this, again, your body is learning to tune in, okay? And we're doing something very similar to the guitar because on guitar, we're gonna move those fingers, we're gonna move that arm, we're gonna move picking fingers, all those little sync, sync ups, those little polyrhythms, all those little places of interdependence are gonna be so, so helpful to you when you actually pick this thing up. And I just say, why pick it up first when you can do so much without it, okay? Now, the last thing I, last I wanna mention on the body and then we're gonna pick up the guitar, okay? I know you guys have all been waiting for that. Eighth notes, what you can do if, you, if you're a little bit more advanced with this, do the same kind of things, but just introduce accents. So rhythm is a combination of sound and silence and loud and soft. That's pretty much it. I view it as north, south, east, west, okay? Loud and soft and sound and silence, okay? It's the four spectrums, the compass, if you will, of rhythm. That's all it is, okay? So now what we have to do is introduce some dynamics or some loud and softs into that rhythm. And what we can do is we can take like quarter notes and maybe, let's take that eighth note out of there, and maybe start by doing accent on one. So we got, okay? A way to do this, take the same kind of note, which is a quarter note, but do an accent on three maybe. So this hand is. Or maybe I want to take it to four. So my right hand is going on one, my left hand's going on four. Okay, and then you could take your foot and accent it in there a little bit differently. So we got one over here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. It's kind of hard to show without drums. Three, four, one, two. So you can put it in your leg, and now I'm accenting with my left foot. Okay, and you're throwing it around. So now experiment with different louds and softs, okay? I'm gonna stop right there with the body stuff. We can go on to eighth notes and stuff in our live stuff coming up in the months to come, but let's pick up the guitar. And now you can take the same kind of ideas and obviously when you're playing guitar, you really have, for the most part, let's just take a simple G chord. Again, start with what's familiar work outward. Most of you are familiar with G chord. I like to start with G chord because most of you know that. And start the same kind of thing. You've removed your legs, obviously, but the, the interdependence you formed with those legs are still there, even though you're maybe not using them, okay? And just start something very similar. You can start an accent on one, and then slowly maybe with your voice. One, da, da, da. So now I'm putting that one on my one hand, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? And I'm accenting two with my voice. So we got that one, one, two, three, four, and then my voice comes in. Then swap them. One, two, three, four. 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 Now I've offset them, so I'm putting two in my picking hand and one in um, my singing voice. Okay? And again, we're removing things off the plate. We're not singing and playing yet. We're not changing pitch. But again, that's adding something new to your brain. If you're trying to focus on syncing this up, getting that voice to, to play a different accent, plus trying to develop pitch, 
You've got a lot of complicated things trying to operate and they're all crowding each other here and it's going to be nonsense and it's going to be miserable and that's what most of you have voiced to me when you're trying to learn to play and sing. So the idea is make it familiar. Get this thing to where it's comfortable and you don't have to think about it. You know, talk to your wife, talk to your daughter, talk to your son while you're doing this as practice and get used to making that happen. I would start all downstrokes first. Get used to what a downbeat feels like. Then play those quarter notes the same way, but do an upstroke. One, two, three, four. And then, so now you've got an alternating hand, okay, with that one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, okay? And you're alternating different things. So, Take it to that whole note level, take it to the half note, take it to the quarter note, and maybe stop there. And just try that with some familiar chords. And I would say if you're a little bit more advanced than that, then do the same thing, but sing a song over it, um, like a Mary Had a Little Lamb or something simple, maybe it's something you know like an 80s rock tune, or maybe it's something from the 70s you're real familiar with. Just pick something that's very familiar um, that you're gonna be able to execute fairly quickly. Okay, so um, now, now that we're at this point in the um, kind of live broadcast, do I need to stop and take any questions or? Uh, we do have quite a few questions for you. Great. Um, so you if, want me to kind of slow down and stop then? Yeah, if you're at a point where you Yeah, because I was about to move something different, so I'll stop and answer some questions. Okay, let's get a few in here then. Uh, this first one is from Lynn Marie, and the question should be on the, your screen there. Uh, Lynn Marie, what are what are the steps to play and sing? Do I learn the guitar and then add the singing? I have great difficulty singing in tune with guitar, so maybe more of a, a melodic uh, question here. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so you're the first part of the question. It seems like two questions to me. So, what are the steps to play and sing? Okay. First is a lot of what I just showed you. Um, you don't have to ca care, care so much about melody, about hitting the right pitches when you do what I just showed you in this first part of this live discussion. All you have to care about is the polyrhythm. You can sound like a chicken and do this. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have a sense of pitch at all. That's the best place to start is making a sound. Um, would you mind keeping that? Um, can that question go back up on the screen just so I make sure I hit it all? Um, and what I would say is, again, this part of your brain is really important. If you're learning to play and sing, you've got to do them separately first, okay? So if you're learning guitar, get that guitar to where that strum is second nature. It's on cruise control. Remember I talked about the cruise control part of your brain where you're just cruising. Then introduce the radio. Then introduce conversation with people in the car. Then introduce, you know, putting on your makeup. Don't tell the cops I said that. But you got to introduce the free-flowing elements to what you already know is familiar. So I would start with one and then the other. And then when you say I have a great difficulty singing in tune with the guitar, that's really not a, a, a playing and singing issue. That's really an intonation. That's an ear issue. Um, and what I would suggest is go learn solfege first. Um, that's the best. When I teach voice, I also teach voice. Um, I always start you with solfege, and I start you with um, some breathing techniques to access the right place in the diaphragm. The voice basically operates in three places. It's going to operate, well, four places actually. The diaphragm, the throat, it's going to operate in, this, the, in your mouth, which I call your cathedral. This is what makes the notes sound and shapes them. And right here, this is where the breath centers between your eyes. Okay, And so there's going to be some breath techniques to teach you just how to hit notes correctly, to get them strong with the diaphragm, get them directed with the throat, get them round with the, with the embouchure or your mouth, and get them centered with the breath, breath between the eyes. And that's just some vocal technique combined with singing solfege, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, and just go and plunk those piano notes and start trying to just match, just play one note. And just try to match that note. And try to match that note. Okay, and just see if you can center on those pitches as quickly as possible. That's a place I would start before I'd ever start putting, uh, playing and singing together. All right, great. Uh, this next one is from George Foster. He has a question about your guitar. It says, beautiful wood on the guitar. What type is it? Um, this is a, a Bear Claw Sitka Spruce. 
Um, and back on the back here, that's pretty in it. Um, that is a um, African maple. Um, actually, no, African redwood. Sorry, um, but it's striated and everything. And um, yeah, a friend of mine grew, grew up. His dad makes guitars, so he made me this guitar. So yeah, that's that's what kind of gives it that bright, off the top sound, but also that deep um, body as well. So yeah, that's yeah, a beautiful guitar. Um, next one is from Jim. And Jim asks, how do you maintain your count while singing? Metronome. <laughs> That's it. Um, like I said before, if you were here before, um, metronome, I've seen far greater progress in any musician who learns to use a metronome. Now, what I did was I started off just clicking. I told you I slept with a metronome on when I learned drums. And slowly, you start to feel where that one is wherever you are. And then you begin harder rhythms, what's called playing over the bar line where I could play in groups of five, but we're in groups of four. And then you get into time signature and more complex things, but you know that four, it's a group of four, right? And it's gonna come back around at 20, because five, group of five, is gonna come back around with 20 as well, right? So they're going to offset each other as they're going, but they're gonna come back at the same number. And so you start to sense where one is, even if you're playing in different groups. And that's obviously very complicated. That gets into a lot of uh, polyrhythms and um, duplets and all that kind of stuff. But what I would suggest is establish notes you're used to now. Play in 4-4, four, four, play in 3-4, play in 6-8. These are common time signatures to learn and learn to sense where one is. And then slowly accent. So if you're playing one, it, there's a one, two, three, four. And then learn to feel one even when you're accenting two. One. 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 Or one. 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 There I'm accenting three. So even if you're not accentuating the beat one, throw different accents in there and emphasize different notes and the way you're gonna play with starting to feel one even when it seems like it disappears or you're trying to keep a sense of your head play with dynamics Com combine that metronome with playing loud and soft and see if you can still count one two three four one two three four five six whatever meter you're in but I'd suggest starting with those three three four 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 or six eight okay uh, so you have some more material in another direction you want to go here if I not, can, but can, I can keep can answering keep... some questions too. It just—it's all up to what everybody's wanting. Should we? Should we put it to a uh, to a vote? Yes. <laughs> or the I, think uh, the I think the line of questions, particularly that we've got on the list, would be good, and then you can great. You can pick your because what I was going to show is a little bit of the song that I did just play, and kind of give you a way to um, teach you a little bit of those chords and teach you how to do some of what we've been talking about over the chords I just played. So might be best to answer some more questions before we do that. I want to see some more questions. All right. Okay, this one is from Marco, and his question is, would humming the song while playing help? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, but don't do it right at first. Again, start simple. Get the guitar to where it's cruise control. Then start humming that song. But what you're going to do is if you don't have this set on cruise control, let's say you're playing this to happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Let's say you're just playing that rhythm along. What you're going to start doing is if you don't have independence in that right hand, this is what it's going to sound like. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Right? We're going to sync up those rhythms and align them rather than polyrhythm, which is separate the two. Okay? And that's because, you know, you're trying, it, you're, you know, you're patting your stomach, and so you're going to join and start patting your head. What we've got to do is rub that stomach, get it so good that you can jump right in and start patting that head. And so start with one over the other. As soon as you got one really comfortable, slowly introduce that next one. I would say don't introduce a full song yet. Like I said, introduce some quarter notes, some whole notes, some half notes, humming, just a one, two, three, four, and then hum the whole note. Hum, 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 or hum the half note. Hum, 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 hum. Okay, 
um, just bringing some variation in there. So that w- that's how I would do it. Okay, next question is from Elena. And the question is, one of my biggest problems is dropping the occasional beat or speeding up my tempo while playing and singing. What are some tips to combat that? So metronome, so what your brain is trying to do, it is trying to do a lot of things and do them all not well. You've got to bring it back to that place of center. So that tells me you're not, pre- you're not used to hearing the metronome in your head, so you've got a bad sense of internal sense of time. And that just takes time to develop. So we got one aspect here. The brain cannot separate listening to time. Then the brain cannot separate playing with that time. And then you're adding the singing element, which is another rhythm. So it's trying to do at least three things at once. So strip out two. Bring in listening to the metronome. Literally, listen to a metronome. I know you're going to hate it, but I'm going to suggest putting on a set of headphones and listening to a he- listening to a metronome um, on different tempos, different settings, different time signatures for a year while you sleep. Just do it. I was one my first thing my drum teacher gave me, and it was miserable. But just put it on a soft little click, and your brain is going to start regimenting that time. And you're going to find that you start walking to the tempo to the songs in the grocery store or do stuff that annoys your kids or your wife, right, um, or your husband. So that's one thing that will start you off there. Um, and then that teaches the brain one thing, to listen to the metronome. Then start introducing the second thing. So as you've got that metronome down, like clockwork, then introduce one of the others. Introduce the strum or introduce the singing. So you might want to do like a, um, a do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You might want to just sing along with those quarter notes. Then you might want to mark where one is. So you do a uh, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. And you'll see three stanzas it takes to get around because you got a group of seven and group of eight. So now I've, I've really worked with some interdependence there. So start with one thing slowly add the next thing, maybe complicate it a little bit, then get to the third thing. I would say if you're having trouble with what you're having trouble with right now, I would say you're about six months to seven months away from playing and singing at the same time. I would say you got three months of good solid metronome playing, a couple months of really just playing on one chord with some different rhythms, then start singing. Take it real slow and you'll get there. Okay, this one is from Timothy, and the question is, are backing tracks as good as a metronome, considering they are in time but also tolerable (laughs) and more fun to play with? And there was a similar question for Drum Machine as well. Yep, you can do it, Um, and I think that that's a good question, is you got to make music fun, otherwise you're not going to like practicing it. Um, The way I actually learned guitar was I, as every time I learned a technique, I wrote a song to it. And so when I go back and I play my songs I've written, even the one I played today, I was I was picking up on some new chords and trying to string them together, and so it came out to be a tune that actually went on a record. So um, it's just multiply the effort. But one of the things you want to make sure of when you do that drum track, when you do that um, backing track, it has a good sense timekeeper. So in music, most of the time, the hi hat on the drum set is the one setting the time, or maybe it's a background track that you get through jam play. Um, and there's like a good, solid, you know, even though the solo is going crazy or a bass line's kind of jumping around or the drums are a little bit inconsistent, there might be a consistent strum pattern that's really setting that dut, 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 dut. If you listen to most pieces of music, most styles, you're always going to hear somewhere in there a timekeeper. Listen for that timekeeper like it's the metronome. Most of the time it's going to be that hi-hat or a ride cymbal. That nine, nine times out of ten, that's your timekeeper. Okay, and from Eli, what about lyrics that don't have a rhythm to follow? That's kind of a trick question. <laughs> so um, how I'm reading this, and I hope I'm reading it right, um, is that you have lyrics and you don't have a song to it? That's kind of what I thought, or maybe it's more. It's a really legato kind of a polyrhythm, definitely. Yep. So um, 
um, language has as much rhythm as music do, does. Um, I've taken tons of classes just along the line somewhere in English or poetry or whatever, and poetry is going to have a rhyme and meter. Um, they're going to call those things a haiku poem or they're going to call it a, a different types of poetry based on the meter or the syllables that are included. So when you look at lyrics, you need to identify that meter. Um, if you look at what I'm saying right now, hi, my name is Dave. Okay, there's five syllables right there. Right there, that might be your time signature. Hi, my name is Dave. Dut, 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 dut. There's my, there's my accent pattern. Or if I do, hi, my name is David, now we've got a whole different syllable and accent pattern. So find out, go into the lyrics and identify where that meter is sitting and where the emphasis points are. Um, I do this a lot. I have people hand me all the time lyrics that don't have a melody, and I have to kind of find where the where it's gonna, it's naturally gonna fall on a rhyming word, or it's naturally gonna flow, or where the rhythm and meter kind of changes or speeds up. Because I might say, "Hi, my name is Dave." I go a lot. I go speedboating a lot, and then you go, you sense the "Hi, my name is Dave." I go speedboating a lot you sensed a very slow meter into a very quick tempo. And the music, when you craft it to the lyrics, it's going to have to do the same. Um, and you kind of have to play with that. So I would look at the lyrics first, emphasize where your beats are, emphasize where your accent points or your um, common um, rhyming letter, letters are gonna be, and then introduce the music, if that makes sense. I hope that's what you're asking. Okay, and the next uh, question from Tim. How much time should we devote to this exercise per day? Depends on your goal. Um, I would just suggest for everybody out there, this is what I have people do when they come into my studio for the very first time. I have you sit down and I have you craft a plan with me. Where do you want to be? <laughs> Where do, what do you want to be when you grow up? Okay? Because we got to plan what's on the tombstone before we start living life. Otherwise, we get it all wrong. We end up at the tombstone and go, uh, that's not what I wanted it to say. So rever I call it reverse engineer. Sit down. Tell me what you want to do at the end before you plan the beginning. So go to the end. Say, I want to be a blues guitar player. Okay. Do you really need to work playing and singing into your blues playing? You need to ask that because this may not be even useful for you. I want to be a jazz soloist. You're not probably going to be doing a whole lot of playing and singing. This is probably not useful for you. You need to take, well, I think it would be in, in some so coordinating left and right hand because you're going to need a lot of that in jazz. Okay, so answer that question and then go back, reverse engineer into today and say, what do I need to practice on today? If your goal is, I want to write a couple songs for a record, get it recorded of my own. Okay, well, then maybe you say, okay, well, today I need to start writing some lyrics. I need to devote maybe 5, 10 minutes, 20 minutes to syncopating, practicing some of the stuff Dave is telling me while I'm working on some lyrics and then slowly combine them. And you got to answer the question, how long do you want that to take? Two years, 10 years? That's going to determine how much you have to practice. So that's how I tell people to do it when they come into my studio. Reverse engineer your plan from where you want to end up. Start there, and that will really kind of tell you how much practice per day. I tell this to students because I always have parents, especially, coming in and saying, how much should my kid practice? And I don't like telling them, oh, just have them practice 10 minutes, have them practice 30 minutes. That's useless. Just tell the, you need to tell the parent, start off with little increments. Give, give yourself little victories. Don't start off with 60 minutes of this. You're going to fail, and you're going to get demotivated and it's going to frustrate you and you're going to quit. Do this for five minutes. I bet you can do it. You're going to give yourself a small victory. It's going to make you want to come back the next day. As soon as you start getting some more small wins, add 10 minutes, add 15 minutes, add time. And pretty soon, again, like I said, the, the uh, I can't remember his name who asked about instead of playing with a metronome, which is so annoying, playing with a click track, make the practice fun for you. It pretty much got to a point where I was working on stuff. I knew I wanted to be a singer-songwriter. That was my goal. Um, it's not to be this flashy guy. I wanted to write songs and hand them to somebody else, and that's pretty much what I've done. And so that's my goal. So I knew whenever I practiced, I needed to incorporate it into something familiar to me. So um, I everything I, 
I learned, I wrote it to a song, and I made practice fun for myself. And it made it not practice. I would go 60, 70 minutes practicing like you're asking right here, and I wouldn't even know the difference because I incorporated it in a way that was going where I wanted and was enjoyable for me. So um, there's probably more than you wanted. Okay, and Daniel asks, what's the difference between 2-4 timing and 4-4 timing? It's the amount of beats um, in that measure, okay? So... This room has walls, right? Okay. And we measure it in feet, right? So there's what? 12 feet in this room. Okay. If we walked it across 12, 15 feet and the other is 12, 15 feet. Bar lines or measure lines in music are like walls. And between wall and wall is a space. And we call it a measurement just the same as we call it a measurement from wall to wall. It's a measurement. We measure it. So we're not measuring how much distance like this is how far, this is how far. We're measuring how many beats. So bar line, bar line, we say in this little container from this line to this line, we want to fit two beats or we want to fit four beats. And that's the difference. It's how many beats do we want to make up this container. Now, beats are different than notes because you can have 32 notes in this little spot, but they can't occupy more than two counts or two beats. So you can break this thing down. It's just like this room. We can break it down into meters, which is large. We can break it to feet, centimeters, millimeters. Okay, we can keep breaking it down and you're going to get, you know, let's just say a million millimeters in this room from wall to wall, but it's still 15 feet, right? So think about it that way. And that's how it kind of helps me is, is that two on top is telling you how many beats are in that measure? There's two. There's not four. Okay. It is time to give away another guitar. Not what? mine. Uh, you got to mute this mic, please, sir. You may not have mine. All right, friends. Um, um, we give away the instructor's guitar. We're going to give away the instructor's. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> our business model. I'm for sale. <laughs> I could be bought, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. What's our price? Um, you guys are getting tired of hearing this, You're but I have away. to say it because we have new people. So Just mind. so everyone understands the rules, what I was doing was watching everyone chat during the session, and I was recording the names of people who added to the session. So if you asked a good question, made a good comment, basically did anything but spam, I put you on the list. And we selected a winner and then three runners up randomly. Now here's the really important part. You have to be here right now to win. So if I call your name, if I call your name, you have to respond within two minutes on the chat window on live stream or on the chat window on Facebook, wherever you're at. Um, the guitar is for US, Canada, and uh, Mexico only. And uh, if you are outside of the North America and you win, we will give you a $100 gift card as a consolation prize. So I am going to paste in the chat room the winner's name, and then we are going to announce it on video and that person will have two minutes from the time we post it in the chat room to respond. Because remember, you have to be here. This isn't enter and run away. This is, it's a long haul. You're committing to this. You're committing your whole day to this. All right. Um, here we go. Everyone ready? Everyone ready? I'm copying. I'm getting ready. The winner is, well, the winner is Scott Harris. My entire message didn't type out, but the important part did. Um... Scott Harris is the winner. I will copy and paste this again. That's funny. Just, that's my married name, so I can have this? Yeah, <laughs> definitely, man. Just kidding. <clears throat> How does your wedding work? I don't know. I'm just joking. <laughs> Scott says I'm just trying to come up with an excuse so I can take US. this 12-string away because I would really enjoy it. Scott Harris. Uh, Scott, could you tell us where you're from just so we're curious? Uh, because we are curious. Wow, we haven't had anybody win and not be here today so far. That's pretty good. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Hey, um, for all you uh, ladies and gentlemen on Facebook, we are going to stop the Facebook feed, and uh, we got a little mount so we don't just have to have it duct taped to the tripod anymore. <laughs> so we're going to mount it up so it will be a little easier to control. Um, in case you can't tell, we don't generally broadcast to Facebook. So, Yeah. We maybe have time for, uh, what do you think? One more question? Yeah, one or two more questions. I okay. Good. thought we were supposed to give away trade secrets. 
like what we how we do our filming and trade secrets. Those aren't trade yeah, secrets. Yeah, duct taping a phone yeah, to a, our phone to a stand. There are no trade secrets. We don't we don't give that kind of information away. <laughs> Oops. It's got say where in the U.S. he was from. I did not see that. My friend. Tacoma, Washington. Washington. Woo! We, we won't deliver to Washington. Sorry. Yeah, we will. Washington's one of the few states we actually like. Right. Man. All right, Dave. We got a couple questions more. All right. Uh, this question is maybe needs some clarification. Uh, how do you mix waltz into four four beat or add triplets? Okay, maybe you could just talk about polyrhythms with three four time or um, something along yeah. that line. Yeah, so this kind of gets maybe into duration of the notes um, because all waltz is in a four four time is just a long short long short long short long short long. It's not measured in like. Um, it's not measured so much in t time, like one, two, three, four, a one and two and three and four and, but a waltz is measured more in feel. Um, it's measured more in space. One and two and three and four and. And the best way to do that is, you know, get yourself a metronome that will do triplets if I can get mine. And you can get that triplet. And all that waltz is, is the first and third grouping of the note. And let me see if I can slow this down so we can hear it a bit better. Da, da, da. Slow it down even more than that. See how slow we can get it. So you hear the group of three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. And so we got one, two, three, one, two, three. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. That's what a wall says. It's that first beat and that third beat, okay, of that triplet. One, two, three. So we got, let me wait for it to come back around here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so I would put those triplets on to get that waltz beat. It is the first and let's turn that annoying thing off. Um, to get that triplet is going to be the first and third beats of that triplet. And so work with not only the duration of the notes, but also the dynamics. You can accent, accent, not, accent, not, accent, not, accent, not. Soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud. And it just feels kind of like a rubber band going long, short, long, short, long, short, long. It's more, it's more labor uh, toilsome to bring that thing back and let it snap back. So, bud, bud. That's that comes into like pocket issues, and that was the way someone explained that to me when I was learning pocket back in the day. Was kind of thinking about a rubber band, something long and then short. So that's how I would attack triplets. Um, get yourself a good metronome that will do them for you. All right, let's get one more in here from James. And James questions, I've been playing for 30 years. Are my bad habits going to be harder to break than somebody that just started? Uh-huh. <laughs> Think about how in, in all of life, it's easier to start eating bad, right? And then it's harder to stop. So it's always easier to jump into something than to back out of it. So, um, yes, I'm, I wish we could give you better news. <laughs> Any suggestions for him to break um, those really bad habits? <laughs> can you ask him directly uh, maybe uh, one of those bad habits, or can you not? Is it already moved Pro on? Probably not. We'd probably, probably not. Yeah. Um, I Again, start with isolate simple first. It kind of goes back to this whole lesson. Um, grab one technique you know you have a bad habit in. Go to jam play, go to somebody you respect, have them show it to you correctly. Um, I'm just shocked at how many people I've seen playing for 30 years and their strum pattern is still not right. And how they strum, just how they move their arm, it's all it's it's very um, stressed out, it's very tense, and they're, I've, I'm just shocked they haven't gotten tendonitis. So um, the just go to somebody you really respect or go to jam play and, um, and find a teacher who teaches directly to that, undo that one habit, You'll probably find it undoes two or three more, um, but take once again one step at a time. 
Okay, Dave, thanks a lot for stopping by. We appreciate you have, having you here. Thank you. That's some good stuff. He's got a live course coming up. When is that, Jeff? Mid-February is the official date? Or yeah, February sometime. Um, it's going to be really breaking all this stuff down in great detail, which will be a lot of fun. Yeah, and we'll advance this stuff a lot. We'll go into actual writing songs. We'll show how it's practiced out. This was just kind of wet your whistle kind of thing. Goodness gracious. Sorry for everyone on Facebook. You're probably having a really uncomfortable noise right now. They're probably shaking all over the place, too. <laughs> it's not an earthquake. We're getting a better They're taking here. a camera with duct tape off of the stand. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to turn the audio off, and uh, we're going to get our next instructor in here. Who is that? Cool. Nope. Do you want me to get up yet? Oh, it's actually we're doing trivia. With we are restarting our Facebook feed now, friends. We are ending the event. We will be back. So if you hear the audio go off, don't be alarmed. Can, can I unplug? We'll be back in just a minute.